Welcome, my brothers and sisters, on this 14th day of September, the Feast of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross. I'm Father Michael Polakovich, along with the rest of the team, inviting you into this moment of prayer today. We have a special treat today. Father Michael Mulhern will be speaking to us today and sharing on the life of St. John Gabriel Perbor, of Incension Saint, outstanding in holiness and love for the mission of the gospel. Let us begin as we do all things in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open my lips. And my my mouth mouth shall declare declare your praise. Psalm 63, Thirsting for God How I love and praise you, God! Daily I will worship you passionately and with all my heart. My arms will wave to you like banners of praise. I overflow with praise when I come before you, for the anointing of your presence satisfies me like nothing else. You are such a rich banquet of pleasure to my soul. I lie awake each night thinking of you and reflecting on how you help me like a father. I sing through the night under your splendor shadow, offering up to you my songs of delight and joy. With a passion I pursue and cling to you, Lord because I feel your grip on my life. I keep my soul close to your heart. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hello, this is Vincentian Father Michael Mulhern. During the month of September... We've been asked to focus on St. Vincent de Paul and Vincentian spirituality. And I've been asked to talk a little bit about St. John Gabriel Perbor. John Gabriel is a Vincentian saint who is actually the first canonized saint from China. Of course, John Gabriel was not born in China. He was born in France. He was born in 1802 had a very interesting life, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about it. Today is also the Feast of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross, Jesus' passion and death instrument, if you will, the instrument of the cross. And it's very fitting that we talk about John Gabriel Perbor on the Feast of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross, since, as you will soon see, John Gabriel's death was so similar to that of the death of Jesus. John Gabriel was ordained a priest when he was 24. He was ordained in the chapel of the Daughters of Charity in Paris. John Gabriel always wanted to be a missionary. He was the novice master for those joining the community. He taught in the seminary, the minor seminary. He taught in the major seminary. Uh, He was thought of very highly because he was humble and spiritual and kind and gentle and, and just everything you'd expect in a priest or you'd want a priest to be. Finally, he got the opportunity to go to China. And there he taught for a while and he had catechumens. It wasn't long, though, until the church was under persecution. And eventually, John Gabriel Perbor was arrested. Here's where the interesting part comes. The part that he experienced that was so much like the part that Jesus had in his life. To begin with, John Gabriel was betrayed by the son of one of his catechists and handed over for 30 pieces of silver, just like Jesus was. And from there, there are so many similarities. In fact, scholars have put together 32 similarities between John Gabriel's passion and death and Jesus' passion and death. Like Jesus, he was drugged from tribunal to tribunal. 
He was dressed in priestly vestments, was mocked and scourged and spit on, just like Jesus. He was finally condemned to death, made to carry his own instrument of death, part of his cross, to his crucifixion. He was crucified on a Friday. He was surrounded by other people who were put to death. He was abandoned by several of the people to whom he had taught catechism. He was just undergoing a dark night of the soul, and yet he suffered it like a saint, like you would expect a saint and a martyr to do. John Gabriel was crucified on the 11th of September in 1840, and it wasn't until his beatification in 1889 that his sanctity was fully realized and recognized, but he was canonized by Pope John Paul II, St. John Paul II, I should say, on June the 2nd in 1996. It's very interesting because to this very day, one of the prayers that our community uses was written by St. John Gabriel Perbor. I'd invite you to get a pen and write down this prayer. It's short and maybe make it part of your daily life. Here it is. Divine Savior, transform me into yourself. May my hands be your hands. May my tongue be your tongue. Grant that every faculty of my body may serve only to glorify you. Above all, transform my soul and all its powers, that my memory, my will, and my affections may be the memory, the will, and the affections of you. I pray you to destroy in me all that is not of you. Grant that I may live but in you, and by you, and for you, and that I may truly say with St. Paul, I live now, not I, but Christ lives in me. God bless my friends. Today for our general intercession, let us pray for all the missionaries of the world who risk their lives for the love of the gospel. As we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who willed that your only begotten Son should undergo the cross to save the human race, Grant, we pray, that we, who have known his mystery on earth, may merit the grace of his redemption in heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. St. Vincent de Paul. Pray, pray for us. St. John Gabriel Pierbor. Pray, pray for us. Before we conclude today, I just want to remind you that this week we're encouraging individuals who are part of our God Minute family to reach out to your local parish priest and ask his permission to place a God Minute notice in the parish bulletin. Ideally, um, it would be great if you could do that in person. He may send you to the secretary or bulletin editor, editor but um, it would be great if you could do that. And certainly if you connect with your pastor, we can, uh, and, and you send us the email of the parish or of the pastor, we can connect with them to let them know that we're legitimate to invite more people to pray beautifully with all of us. In the meantime, take good care of yourself and one another, and we'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow.